Hey everybody, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can pull in stock prices into Google Sheets and how you can create a template that track hundreds of stocks. So if I just wanna pull in the current stock price for Amazon, all I have to do is use uh, Google Sheets' Google Finance function. And here there's multiple arguments. We've got ticker, attribute, start date, end date, and the interval. Interval, I, I, I rarely ever use. The start date you may want to use if you want to pull in the prices as of a certain date. And you'll, you, you can specify a start date and an end date if you want to pull in a range. But if you just want the current price, let's say you want Amazon stock price as of now, we specify the ticker symbol, AMZN, and set the attribute to price. So this is up to about a 20 minute delay, but this is gonna be much more up to date than if you were to use Microsoft Excel and the stock history function there. That's only gonna pull stock prices after the closing day has ended. So if you want more up to date data, Google Sheets is what you're gonna to wanna to use to track stock prices. So that's a really simple way to pull in the current stock price. But let's say we wanna track the stock prices for all the stocks on the S&P 500. So I've got a list of the S&P 500. I'm going to paste it into here. And so I've got the company as well as the symbol. So if I want to pull in the stock price, I can, again, use that Google Finance function. This time, I'm going to reference that cell that has the symbol and then set it to price. And I'm going to copy this formula down. And so in, in Google Sheets, you can see there's not, not really a problem with tracking hundreds of stocks. In Excel, I've come across more issues with errors and things not populating. But as you can see, hundreds of stocks pull in within seconds. So a really easy way to pull in the data in Google Sheets. However, this isn't a foolproof solution because the problem is if you're dealing with ticker symbols that are on multiple exchanges, you could come across an issue where it's not pulling the stock that you want. So I'm gonna clear this out and show you an example. So let's say you want to pull a stock price for Air Canada, which trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Its symbol is AC. And if I use the Google Finance function here, and again, pull in the price for AC, it's gonna give me a price of 33.87, which is incorrect. If I type in AC on the Google Finance, func on the Google Finance site, I actually get associated capital group, which is 33.87. If I want to pull in Air Canada stock, what I want to do is type in Air Canada and then, and then I'll see the prefix TSE. So that's the code that I need to use to pull in the correct price, $18.19. So now if I change this to TSC colon AC, now we're going to get 18.22, which is the correct, the correct stock price. So in order to create a really robust and versatile template, you're gonna wanna factor in the exchange as well. Unless you're really uh, just using the, the most common tickers or the most well-known stocks, then you know you could be fine without using the exchange, but it's it's something to keep in mind because if you're using, um, you know, especially ticker symbols that just might have one or two letters that are fairly common, there's a potential that you're pulling in the wrong the wrong share price. Now, obviously you can spot check it to see if that value looks wrong and if, whether you need to correct it, but a better solution may be to, to have multiple fields where we've got, let's say one field for the ticker and one for the actual exchange and then one for the share price. So for example, if we use Air Canada as our ticker symbol, the exchange is TSE. And if you're not sure what code to use for, for the exchange, if you go to the finance.google.com website and then search in for, the, for that company, for that stock, you'll see that, that prefix that it uses there. And so in the, in the case of the Toronto Stock Exchange, it's TSC. So now what I would do is alter my Google Finance function so that when I'm specifying the ticker symbol, I'm first selecting the exchange, then using an ampersand and connecting that with a colon and then connecting that with the ticker symbol. And now when I specify the price, it's gonna factor in both the exchange and the ticker symbol. So I got that 1822, which is the correct one. Now let's say you're looking at uh, a major stock like an Amazon. You don't need to put the ticker symbol, but if we set it up in this kind of format, we wanna put in um, the exchange. So even though you don't need, necessarily need the exchange to get Amazon stock price, um, I'm gonna put it in just for the sake of consistency. And as you can see, the NASDAQ prefix works in, in that case as well. So again, if we use Apple, 
use NASDAQ, copy that formula down, it's gonna have no problem pulling that, that price. Let's say we're, we're getting Berkshire Hathaway stock. So that one trades on the New York Stock Exchange. So that's gonna be NYSE. And then again, that's gonna copy down our formula and it's gonna be able to pull in that calculation as well. So again, let's use Alphabet. That's gonna be on the NASDAQ, copy that formula down. Uh, Eli Lilly, that's the New York Stock Exchange. So these are some of the top stocks on the S&P 500. So that's how we can pull in their share prices by, by factoring the different exchanges that they're on. So we're not just relying just on that ticker symbol, which again, could be, um, could be a bit problematic. In many cases, Google, um, the, the Google Finance function will get the right ticker, but just in case you run into an issue, it's just, the, it's just a good practice to include the exchange as well. Now, one thing you may wanna consider as well um, when building out uh, a template is using some, some additional attributes that are available in the Google Finance function. Like let's say we wanna pull in the percent change. So if I want the percent change for the stocks from the previous day, I can again use the Google Finance function. So I'm gonna copy this formula here because I've already got it set up how I need to. But instead of the price, what I'm gonna do is select change percentage. So that's gonna give me the change from the previous day. So it's gonna tell me that it's changed 1.03 uh, percentage points from the previous day's close. Now, if I wanna convert this into a percentage, use the percentage format, it's gonna look wrong, 103%. So what I need to do is divide this by 100 just to get that percentage symbol set up correctly. And so that's one way we can start building out our template to, to have more of these um, more of these factors, more of these attributes listed here. Now let's say we also want to get the 52 week high and the 52 week low. Again, I can copy that format, um, except that I don't need to divide it by 100 this time. So for the 52 week high, it's going to be high 52. It's going to be high 52. I just need to put that in quotations. And then for the 52 week low, it's gonna be low 52. So it's important to put that attribute in quotations to make sure you're getting the right value. So as you can see, some of these changes are updating as I'm make, making this just because the markets are open as I'm doing this. And again, that's one of the advantages of using Google Sheets. You've got that data fairly up to date and um, uh, making changes as you're as you're working within your sheet so you can see these changes almost almost in real time again up to about a 20 minute delay but a, a lot more um relevant than with uh with excel where you're gonna have to wait until till the trading days cl uh, trading days over so as you can see you can start to build out this template and you can track it for hundreds of stocks whether you want the s p 500 whether you want stocks on uh, different exchanges if you're just doing the s p 500 then you know you can just do that big data dump and potentially not worry about the exchanges and fill in all these other other fields along the way. But if you're dealing with other exchanges, whether it's the Toronto Stock Exchange, whether it's European markets, Asian markets, whatever the case may be, you'll wanna look up for that prefix on Google Finance, populate that in there just so you can track uh, exactly the right stock that you want to, to be able to track and pull in these values for that. But as you can see, you're really, uh, a simple way to pull in the values and an easy way to do that. And with Google Sheets, it's it's well equipped to handle even hundreds of stock prices um, should you want to track it. So a really easy way to set up a tracking sheet to track all the stocks that you want to follow, including um, a lot of different attributes from price, percent change, 52-week highs and lows. You can even pull in price to earnings ratios. So a lot of data that you can get from Google Sheets and its Google Finance function. As a wrap for this video, if you did like it, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.